new, 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 new. Purple robot. <laughs> I don't okay. know. I don't um, know where that came from. All right. So this okay. is uh, a little bit of an update, but we just have this in the store now. This is the code. Uh, yeah, we have a, a code.org kit. This is coming soon. We'll chat about it more later. But if you want to uh, do code.org at home, you'll be able to sign up for this. Okay. This is fun. Okay. So we've been carrying Tronic stuff from JT um, and Bunny Wang, who's helping a little bit with some manufacturing stuff with her. But it's JT's project, and she has come up with a wonderful curriculum. Uh, called Love to Code Volume 1 um, that's Make Code and the Love to Code clip and I thought I would show off a little bit of using the clip, the chibi clip. Yeah. And this is her little characters and it's uh, Fern the Frog and, and her adventures through learning electronics and crafting and paper craft. Um, and I'm really into, as you can tell, we're into paper and uh, cardboard electronics. So let me stuff right here. grab it. Yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing it. So um, this comes as a uh, pack of pages. It doesn't come with a binder um, because it's actually meant to be an add-on pack for a starter kit that we'll be carrying on soon. But you can get a binder and just and bind it yourself. It comes um, together. And so it's like, really beautifully illustrated. And there's a story. And then this is the chibi uh, clip that you're going to be programming with. And you can program it with make code. So it's drag and drop programming. And the neat thing is uses an audio cable so you don't even need USB it's it's actually not even drag and drop it's like audio it programs it through the, the headphone jack so you can use it with any computer that has headphone out including a, a tablet or a phone and so this is basically you get the chibi clip and an LED pack and then you can go through all these uh, I like projects. that the pages are binder based so you can make it so it folds flat yeah and, and you can workshop. And you can take out pieces like you can take them out and like Xerox them and, and pass them around so it is, it's a really cool idea Again, more beautiful drawings, showing an LED and how LEDs work. And then this is the first project. Um, we just took this page out. So you put down copper tape on, it tells you where to put it. Like, you know, we, on the back there was a little line that said, put the copper tape here. And then it said, stick the, um, Do the LED frog says. here. Do, the, Do frog the frog says. Says. No, the frog is like, she's learning. And then um, how to fold it here. And then it tells you how to clip the uh, chibi chip on with clip and um, this flexible uh, connector here it has these like um, flex gold pads so that when you clip it on you'll see the LED follows the light so as the lights go down here this LED follows along so it's really really easy and creative and like it, it's bringing electronics is a different direction it's all about crafting there's no breadboarding there's no alligator clips it's just copper tape and these circuit stickers that you can recycle so you can pull the sticker off and reuse it again um, you, it's not like one-time use only and then of course the clip you can um, very easily remove and and you know if you want to keep this as is you can remove the electronics and then re-add it later so this is for the book pack um, you know it, it's full color and it like you get to learn all sorts of parts about electronics and like some of the projects get really cool. You get to like cut out little characters um, like this cat and then the, the character blinks and, and does activities. So um, this is a really great add on for the chibi uh, chip and chibi clip. If you want to like have activities and not just like free form, if you want to follow along with a guide. Um, so it's a full curriculum and it's like a couple it's like 100 pages at least. It's a, quite a long booklet, um, but it's not too expensive. And yeah, get a binder and you can just put it in any standard binder you find in an office store. Okay. Love to code. Next up. And now it's on to uh, DIN railing. So you have DIN rails because you're doing some industrial stuff and you want to connect wires and you're like, I don't want my wiring to be all ugly. Well, we have a solution for you. We have two versions of this uh, RG45 breakout that's DIN rail compatible. Uh, a customer suggested them to me and I was like, you know what, that's actually a good idea. I don't do a lot of DIN rail stuff, but I know people who do and they're always asking for like DIN rail things that let you simplify projects. So we have two types, so. Two types. I'll show the other photos. I'll show both. And I got two pieces of DIN rail to demo it as well. Wow. So your DIN rails. Um, and this is did rail standard. We got these little pieces so you can demo it. And this clips on quite nicely. And you can like, if you really push it, you can push it up and down. Um, it's not gonna move, like you can shake it. You have to really, like kind of give it a good shove. RG45 
also known as standard Ethernet cable. You don't have to use it as Ethernet cable, though. You're just using it as it's like a very low cost, very durable uh, cabling solution. Yeah, and you can make your own connectors and all that. So you can always make different lengths. Yeah, it's super sweet. Good for industry. You don't want wires hanging on everywhere. No, you don't want wires. And then you have a little breakout proto area here where you can like connect resistors or jumpers. And then you have these big terminal blocks that you can plug into all of the um, contacts. And so this one has a right angle jack, so you can see it goes out this way. And then I couldn't really decide, so I'm just gonna get both. This is the uh, vertical or straight. But straight's kind of confusing, because it's like, is it straight up or is it straight out? So I just say vertical, it goes up. Um, otherwise identical, same breakout, same terminal blocks, but just two different types of connectors. So depending on how your wiring is going, I, I, we'll see if one becomes much more popular, I'll discontinue the other, but I don't mind carrying both for now. And then, yeah, plugs into the standard DIN rail, easy to use, fully assembled, ready to go, just use a screwdriver and your wiring is simplified. Okay. In honor of- uh, So easy. Purple robot, here's purple, purple robot. Purple robot. I just wanna see you roving, Jim. purple robot. Um, this is a robot chassis, and this demo shows it assembled. So we have a bunch of photos, but also show this off. Nice robot. Um, this is a bent aluminum chassis. I really liked this chassis. First off, it comes in a cool color. And, you know, like oftentimes chassis are like, is black or it's red or it's like clear acrylic. This is a beautiful uh, purple, royal purple color. Blink of purple. And, um, it's perfect for TT motors. So those are these yellow motors that we stock. They're very common, they're very low cost, but you do have to have an enclosure that has like the mounting points for it. So what's really nice is it's got these holes here that are like perfectly lined up with the screws. Here, I'll pull this off so you can see. There's this little dot here that orients it and then there's these two screw holes and it's like perfectly lined up and there's this little notch here that fits this little flange. So this is designed for TT motors. You just add two like one inch screws, you screw it in and like you've got a two wheeled robot, super easy. And then you just add the wheels. Um, you can add a two by two AA battery pack. So um, we don't stock these, but you can get them at like an electronics shop other than us, like DigiKey carries them and Mouser carries them. But um, two by two, so you get four, uh, double A's and I just uh, use some foam tape, use some Velcro also, or zip tie it on. And it won't, it won't clear the bottom, so you don't have to worry about it like bumping into stuff. So that's, that's your battery pack. And then you just add a ball caster. Um, this one unfortunately came loose, but you can just tighten the screws, unlike this one, and um, you'll be good to go. Here, do that really fast. There you go. So yeah, you can have your, your ball caster, um, so that, that's your support. And, and then on the top, you've got tons of space. I put a breadboard, but you can put like anything. And there's just like so many mounting slots and holes. And this is a micro servo cutout. You could like attach an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. Like you basically have so many options. Um, there's no worries about like whether you'll be able to attach stuff. And what I like is it's not symmetric, which is good. It means it's actually easier to attach things at unusual angles if you need to. And there's like slots in the front and then there's this, these weird slots over here and there's slots on the side and then there's these like little things that you can attach LEDs to. So it's, you know, it doesn't have too many holes, but it has the, just the right number to yeah. attach stuff, which I like. Um, sometimes they go a little crazy and they add so many, you're like, it, it's barely a chassis anymore, but this is still very strong bent. It's two millimeter thick aluminum, high quality, and it has uh, tons of, you know, you can attach a line following sensor, whatever yeah. you want. So we have a, a nice, I like this. This is a nice rectangular chassis. We have a round chassis as well, but now we have a rectangular one. So. Okay. Well. Go us. The, the star of the show tonight besides you and our community lady, I, I put this one here because I, I like, I like things that make that things, things, other things work well This together. is actually my favorite too. Yeah, see? It's just a piece of I plastic. You, I didn't even ask you about this. It's not like, even. Like, this is my favorite. You're like, what is this like? It's it's a, like one gram piece of plastic. Yes, but it's very important. But it's the right one gram piece of plastic. So yep. this is a adapter that goes from TT motors to Lego axles or compatibles. Lego compatible brick. I don't know. I don't Lego use dash compatible. Lego dash compatible. So yeah. um, again, these TT motors, I really like them. They're low cost, very popular. So you'll see like a lot of the stuff that we're carrying is TT motor compatible. So I'm trying to make it so when you use our motors, it's not like, ha ha, like you got these motors, good luck. We have all these wheels and accessories and sensors and, and things that plug into it so you can 
build your project and, and it's all fairly low cost parts, but has a lot of capability. So this has exactly the right notch inside. Like it has to be, has this like oval shape. So this oval shape clips on here and it's like a totally snug fit. Like it, unless you yeah. really, now it's kind of on purpose. I've been doing oh, so much stuff with robotics. Having that little piece that can go on to these TT motors is really handy. Just generally speaking. Because otherwise yeah. you have to do a bunch of stuff to get the motor to do the No, thing you can there. glue. There's a screw, but it's like, this is this uh. is really nice. And then it gives you a nice long axle. You can cut this down. If it's like, why is it so long? You don't have to have it this long. I think <laughs> it's long so you can clear whatever, you know, mounting system you have. But it doesn't matter. You can cut it down very easily. It's just plastic. Yeah. And it's exactly the right shape for press fitting onto Lego compatible gears. So now your TT motor is compatible with Lego Technics and Mindstorms and anything else that uses the Lego system. There's wheels and accessories and cams that work on it. I like it. This has yeah. like an offset version, so you can like use this as a cam yep. to, um, to have weird motion. So this lets you extend, don't get me wrong, actually, I like the Lego motor system, but it's, you're not gonna be able to program in Python or CircuitPython or That's Arduino. Right. No, this way, uh, now you can do make code. Yeah, what I like is it allows you to do more with what you have. You get more, and these motors are really inexpensive. It's like yeah. two or three dollars. So if you have like a we do kit, you know, the motors are really, really nice. They're very powerful, but they're more than three dollars. Yeah. So maybe you can like build some of your project in Lego and then use a Cricut or Circuit Playground or Arduino and these TT motors, which are very easy to use mount it on and then you can interface with the less rest of your your lego creation so i think this is neat i like things that cross boundaries and this is a boundary crossing item so when i saw this i was like oh my god this is totally solves a problem that i didn't even know we had like i've never seen an adapter for this kind of stuff yeah um and some people have like 3d printed this sort of thing but yeah what's neat this is, is nice injection there's a lot of folks have legos and they're just like oh like they're just they don't do anything or I'm interested in other things right now, but then you can combine the two. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of um, kids who have Legos, and then there's like, here's a STEM bot, and it's like $300 and just like draws a line or something like that. It turns out you could probably just enhance the, the Legos that you have with something like this and then build whatever type of thing you want. Another thing is you've been picking up a lot of um, robot gears and stuff, and the, the, the robot gears that you're getting it's not that they aren't good quality. They're totally fine, but they're like, they're not like Lego where they're like really big and chunky yeah. and everything. Like I'm sampling all of them just to, you, yeah. you, just like you have your. Um, I have a sample tray. Yeah. yeah, you have a bin of like Arduino killers. Every time someone came out with an Arduino killer, so we have I have a bin of just every type of gear, and they're unusable. <laughs> they're, they, yeah, yeah, they're the really Le hard to Lego use. Lego ones are really good. And of course, you know, it also comes with on the other side. You can build. The, you know, it's not just the gear that you need, but you have everything that holds the rack and the pinion in place. So the, you know, when you're in the Lego system, that all that stuff works quite well. So I think this is, you know, we'll do some projects where we yeah. take a cricket and, and attach a Lego stuff to it and, and yep. make Lego creation. So this is, this is my favorite product okay. this week. And with that is.